This is the story of Shreya, a brave climber from Toronto who had a dream of reaching the top of Mount Everest. On May 19, 2012, her dream came true as she reached the snowy summit and felt incredibly happy. But something terrible happened. Shreya and four other climbers lost their lives. The mountain was crowded. Shreya had done so well, climbing 1,000 meters in just 18 hours. But there were unexpected problems on the way back. Shreya, a determined and eager woman, found herself with a group of climbers leaving Camp 4, which is the last crucial step before the tough final climb to the summit. What she saw was both breathtaking and overwhelming, a long line of climbers and guides winding their way up to the steep mountainside. With over 500 people in this slow-moving group, she joined them, following their slow pace through the night and into the morning. Every few steps, they had to take a long break to rest because the air was very thin at 8,000 meters, known as the dangerous death zone. Even with the help of bottled oxygen, Shreya couldn't move quickly. Then Sherpas noticed that she was getting tired and showing signs of altitude sickness, a serious problem that had already claimed the lives of other climbers, including one bin from South Korea and Eberhard Schaft, a 61-year-old doctor from Germany. Shreya herself came from Kathmandu, but she had grown up in the lively city of Mumbai, India. She later moved to Canada with her husband to start a new life and establish their import company called SOS Splash of Style Incorporated. Besides being an entrepreneur, Shreya was actively involved in social and political activities. She dedicated her time to the Conservative Party of Canada and held the position of secretary on the board of directors for the party's Toronto Davenport Writing Association. In Canada, where Shreya now lived, she became more committed to her beliefs. Even with a busy life, she couldn't let go of her dream to conquer Mount Everest. She had a strong desire to do something meaningful for her country, and that pushed her to try to reach the summit. Unfortunately, she didn't know how tragic it would turn out to be. Shreya's dream of climbing Mount Everest started when she was nine years old. She took a helicopter ride to the top, and it sparked something inside her. Even though she didn't have much experience climbing such a tall mountain, her godfather, Bikram Lamba, estimated that she spent a huge amount of money, around $100,000, to fund her expedition. She even mortgaged her home to make her dream possible. To get ready for the tough journey, Shreya trained hard. She ran up hills near her home on Dufarin Street and Eglinton Avenue while carrying a heavy bag weighing 20 kilograms. Her training program, designed with the help of her team from Nepal, included karate, rock climbing, and aerobic exercises. But despite all her efforts, she fell behind in her training, and some people warned her that she might not succeed. In an interview, Shreya's husband revealed that she didn't share her thoughts and fears with him, so he was surprised that she was allowed to go on such a dangerous trip. Unlike her previous successful climbs, this one was very challenging. Shreya and her climbing partner got stuck in the snow for two long and painful hours, waiting for their turn to finish the last part of the climb. The path ahead was full of uncertainty and difficulties, which hinted at the tragic outcome that awaited Shreya and the other climbers. While Fukuri was coming down the mountain, he met Shreya and the rest of their climbing group at the south summit. It was already late in the day, and it was not safe to descend during the afternoon when the wind gets stronger and storms can occur. Takori, the manager of the trekking company, tried to convince Shreya, whose energy was fading, to turn back. However, she was determined to reach the summit and continued despite being the slowest climber in the group. Eventually, she had to rely on the Sherpas to help her down the dangerous mountain. When people sign up for adventures with utmost adventure, they have to follow the guide's advice according to the contract. But at 8,700 meters, it becomes challenging to enforce. Takuri matter-of-factly said, we can't bring her down if she doesn't listen. Sadly, Shreya was not the only one who ignored the advice. A man from Switzerland and a 16-year-old girl from Nepal also decided to keep going. As a result, these four people lost their lives on the way back to the camp. Reports say that they had enough oxygen to reach the summit but didn't have enough to safely return to the main camp. It is believed that they knew about this problem but still chose to continue. Takuri managed to convince three other climbers who were from Slovakia and attempting the summit without extra oxygen to turn back. Their weight, long exposure to high altitudes, and poor blood circulation put them at a higher risk of frostbite. Shortly after 3 p.m., the guides Timber Sherpa and Dawi Denda Sherpa contacted the base camp to let them know that the rest of the expedition had successfully reached the summit and started their way back down. Bruce Chlorphine, Shreya's husband in Toronto, received this happy news from Rishi Raj Kadel. 
the expedition manager, who used a satellite phone at 5.30 in the morning to share the update. Everyone felt so happy and proud, especially Shreya, who had dedicated her life to achieving this moment. The news quickly spread to her family, friends, and well-wishers, and they started celebrating and congratulating each other. However, things took a bad turn from this point onwards. Shreya was not in the best physical shape for such a tough challenge, but she remained determined. Unfortunately, her health started getting worse as she fell behind the others. When she reached the South Summit, she was in terrible pain and couldn't stand on her own. Her mind also started getting confused, as she spoke unclearly and couldn't focus properly. The Sherpas tried their best to help her, taking turns to support her and guide her through the rocky areas. Shreya had been on the mountain for almost 24 hours and she had already used up nine bottles of oxygen, feeling completely exhausted and depleted. The situation became even worse as the weather deteriorated. Cadell, who was there with them, described how the conditions got worse, temperatures dropped, winds intensified, and there was a sense of danger all around them. Shreya's declining physical condition combined with the harsh weather created a very dangerous situation for all the climbers on that difficult descent. As the few survivors were making their way back to Camp 4, another group of climbers was getting ready for their own climb. One of them was John Kodrovsky, a mountain climber from Colorado who was also a geography professor. Like many others, he decided to delay his climb in the hope of avoiding the crowded conditions. When he finally reached the top of the glacier's slope, he saw a distressing sight. There were about 8 to 10 people struggling to move an unconscious man through the snow. The more he encountered people in trouble, the more he realized the serious situation unfolding around him. The sharp contrast between his relatively smooth climb and the growing difficulties faced by others showed him the immense challenges that awaited those who dared to conquer Everest. Kodrovsky's own journey was relatively fast, taking him only five and a half hours and using just one bottle of oxygen to reach the south summit. Since he was born and raised in Vail, he had the advantage of being acclimated to the altitude and didn't have significant issues related to it. However, as he got closer to the final stretch, the wind became dangerously strong. Faced with the risk of being blown off the mountain, he made the tough decision to abandon his attempt to reach the summit. Looking back, this decision was undoubtedly wise. While bravery and determination are commendable qualities in mountaineering, if the price is risking one's life, there is no better choice than prioritizing safety. John Kodrovsky, the geography professor, showed this on that fateful day which happened to be the same day that Shreya made her unfortunate decision to continue, despite the overwhelming odds. Less than a week after the tragic events on Mount Everest, on May 25th, Leduc and Kodrovsky, a government lawyer and another person, announced their plans for a second conference. Meanwhile, the body of the climber in the red parka jacket still remained near the dangerous rock areas. While they were busy discussing and making preparations, Leduc, who was browsing the internet at base camp, noticed that a Canadian flag was placed over Shreya's lifeless body. Coincidentally, on the same day that Shreya died, Tammy Watanbe, a 73-year-old Japanese climber, broke her own record and became the oldest woman to successfully reach the summit of Everest. When Shreya's body was found by a group of Sherpas in late May, her husband Bruce traveled to Nepal to bring her remains back home. However, he chose not to give interviews during this time of grief and instead wanted to process his emotions privately. 